Hey everybody, Mike Iconelli getting ready to show you a brand new vlog from Tackle Warehouse. It's windy, you know you gotta pick up a spinnerbait, but I'm gonna show you a solution to catching fish and not missing them with a spinnerbait. And guess what? You don't even have to use a trailer hook. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Oh God, Jesus, God, I mean, absolutely hammered. All right, all right guys, new lake, new bait, new conditions. We're at the uh, Suwannee Valley Preserve. There's like 60 lakes here, it's something ridiculous. The first lake was a little slow, caught some nice ones on a swim jig. We decided to make a move. And as we moved, I want you to see this in a second, the trees started to sway. The wind started to pick up. When you have warming water and you have wind, it's hard to beat that thing right there. It's hard to beat a spinnerbait. So, I mean, we just put in, caught one already. Nice start to the day on this spinnerbait that's pretty special, pretty unique. Let me tell you a little bit about this thing. All right guys, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this spinnerbait. It's very unique. And this is the brand new Mullix Lover short arm spinnerbait, AKA Shorty. And when you look at it, that's the first thing you're gonna notice. Look at that little tiny short wire. Just for comparison, there's a normal spinnerbait, right? We call that the safety pin wire. And you see how long that wire is, right? There's the normal spinnerbait and there's the Shorty. This thing is special, and with that short arm and this blade and the blade position, you get a tremendous amount of thump and vibration from this. Um, I can honestly tell you, it almost feels like a vibrating jig, right? It feels like a chatterbait style lure. That's how hard the thump is. The other great thing about this short arm spinnerbait is the blade does not impede with the hook, right? Look at that, the blade does not impede with the hook. When you look at a normal spinnerbait, a lot of times those fish attack the blades, right? Look how far back that blade is, right? It's, it's beyond the hook. With the short arm lover, that thing is in front of the hook. So when that fish attacks it, and he's attacking the blade, that's what he's going after, that's what's got the flash and vibration. When he attacks it, it's all hook, right? There's no a wire, there's no blades to get in the way of the hook, he's gonna get all hook. You know, look at that very flat face, that very flat, broad face. That's important, it helps the bait run true, gives it a little side to side. The great thing about the spinnerbait is you can fish it a lot of ways. You can burn it, you can medium retrieve it. It's great slow rolling on the bottom or toward the bottom. You can even fish it as a helicopter lure. So, really unique spinnerbait, I'm excited about it. Uh, just launched on Tackle Warehouse, available right now. This is the kind of bait that when it gets windy, you better pick it up. That drops off real nice right there. Oh, jeez. This thing came out of nowhere. <laughs> Another little, little, uh, Boogaloo Dace on the Golden Shiner color. You know, this area, one of the things I know, it's got a lot of forage here uh, in these lakes. There's shad, there's bluegill, there's crawfish. But when you're in Florida, this color right here is an important color. It's called Golden Shiner. A lot of these bass are feeding on, on natural Golden Shiners here, so. And that bird agrees with me. You can't go wrong with that color if you're in Florida. Fish. 
Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Louise. That's the thing about this spinnerbait. Guys, look at this. Watch this. Look at that. <laughs> so that's the thing about the spinnerbait. This is our third fish. This is on that brand new Mullix. It's called the short arm lover. I call it the shorty. Look at how he ate that thing. And you heard me talking about it earlier, but because of that short arm and because of that big willow, doesn't impede on the hook. Regular spinnerbait, you have a lot knock it. They hit in the blades. Look how short that arm is. The blade's always in front of the hook, which means way better hookups. That is awesome to see how good they're eating that thing. Nice, nice long bass, long male. Looking for a female, but that's a nice fish. That's not bad. Oh my God, oh my God, what was that? That's a good one. Oh, he ate it again, he, he swallowed it, just like he did that last one. Yeah, jeez, Louise. Dude, this is unbelievable, the way they're hitting this thing. Look at that. Another good one. Again, look at that. that this is a good look at what I'm talking about. See how short that arm is? It keeps the blade in front of the hook. These fish, they're not after the head and the skirt. They're after this blade. On this Mollux Lover short arm, that blade has a tremendous amount of flash, tremendous amount of vibration, and that's what they're trying to attack. That's what looks like the golden shiner, right? The blade. And because that wire never gets in the way, when they go after that blade, all they have is, is hook. Um, this is an amazing bite. I'm gonna let this fish go, and then I wanna talk to you a little bit about the three or four different ways you could fish it, but right now they're hitting it on a medium retrieve and they want it stutter stopped, and I'm gonna show you how I flick those blades to create a reaction strike. You know, this wind for sure is helping the spinnerbait bite, but this Mullix uh, Short Arm Lover, AK Shorty, a lot of different ways you could fish it. You can burn it, you can slow roll it, you could even helicopter the bait around vertical cover. But I want to show you, I'm basically fishing a medium retrieve with a stutter stop. And I'm trying to get those blades to really flick and turn. And because it has that big single, every time I do that, it flashes and vibrates and creates a reaction strike. So I'm going to show you the basic technique. And we're fishing an outside weed edge here. We're at about six to eight feet of water. When that bait hits, I want to let it get down a little bit. But once it gets down, I'm just going to begin a medium retrieve. But here's the key. Watch, watch these stutter stops that I'm putting in, and I do it with the reel, and I do it with the rod. And every time I, I just, I kind of hit that reel like that, or just give it a little flick with my rod tip, that big single blade is just jumping. It's making a jump. And um, that's really the deal a lot on getting a reaction strike. They're attracted to that blade because of the flash, they're attracted to that blade because of the vibration. And when you give it that little irregular movement, that's the trigger point for where they'll eat it. But every one of those fish so far in that little group have all been on this little thing I'm doing here. It's kind of cool. I mean, generally the cooler the water, the more you slow it down, the warmer the water, the faster you reel it. And, right, and that makes sense because right now, right, look, we're in high 50 degree water, moderate, it's moderately warm, so it's, this is a moderate retrieve. A lot of times you wanna just match your retrieve to the water temperature. If this water was 70 or 80, burning would be really good. If this water was 40, that slow roll technique would be good, but 50, 60 degree water, this medium retrieve with these little stutters, you can either do it with the reel, you can do it with the rod, that's, that's the deal. Oh. It's a 
look at that fish is a good look at what they're relating to. And uh, you see all that salad, that's uh, hydrilla. And these fish, if you, if you look, I'll show you here on the depth finder in a second, there's edges or walls in about six to eight feet of water and that hydrilla ends. And if you can get this spinner bait and, and you watch me, I'm just using my rod and I'm using my reel. And every time I stutter stop it, that blade right there kind of flicks and goes crazy. And another fish absolutely annihilated it. This spinnerbait, I'm telling you, if you're a spinnerbait fan, if you like throwing them and you hate missing them, try that short arm. You don't miss a lot with that, with that hook. They really seem like they want to be on those edges. You get on top of anything, you can't really get bit. I wonder if that Tokyo would work punching in this in this hydrilla in those same edges. Maybe the big ones are just like conquered down, they don't want to come up. So we're catching all males, you notice that? Every one's like two, two and a half pounders, all of them. Photocopies. Because I can see that edge. I wonder if I get that Tokyo and pitch it in there. Gotta try that at some point. Catch one more on this, maybe. Good, not a big one, but a decent one. All right. Another fish on the lover short arm. Once again, look at that. When they get it, they get that hook almost every time. Here's a good look at it. Um, I talked to you about the bait. I talked to you about the importance of that retrieve. I want to talk to you about the rod, the reel, and the line now, because that's a key part of this equation. So with the rod, you know, with this kind of spinner bait, I really think you need a seven to seven four medium action rod, right? With a spinner bait, it's like a chatter bait. You want to let them get it before you set the hook. So a medium action, this is my favorite. It's the seven foot medium Abu Garcia Ike series rod. This is the power series. It's a graphite rod. And if you look at the tip, this is about what you want. Look at that, it's about 30% tip right so about there 30 percent tip and the rest is backbone because you still need backbone to get that hook uh driven home the reel for this technique especially you saw us i call it medium retrieve with stutter stop slow yourself down with the reel slow yourself down force yourself by going to a more medium retrieve gear ratio reel this is the abu garcia revo premier it's got a seven three to one it's got a 7-3 to 1, and that 7-3 to 1 is going to slow me down. Last but not least, my line choice when I'm fishing this lover short arm is fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon. I like 12 to 20, but this 17-pound 100% Berkeley Trilene fluorocarbon is the deal. The reason I'm using all fluorocarbon, it's helping this bait get down. It's helping this bait have maximum action. We talked about that little side-to-side -side shake. You're not going to get that with mono. You're not going to get that with braid. Fluorocarbon's dense. That's the perfect line for that spinnerbait. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you something else. You notice today we've been fishing around a little bit of wood, a little bit of reeds, but mainly that hydrilla. And take a look at that. I know what you're thinking. Why no trailer hook? No trailer hook. And with this lover short arm, because that blade does not get in the way of that hook, I don't need a trailer hook. It's one of the great features of this thing. So fishing around cover, wood, rocks, docks, logs, and especially grass, I don't need that big free swinging trailer. It's not going to hook grass and stumps and rocks. And I'm going to get a solid hookup because that blade does not interfere with the hook. There he goes.
All right, made a little switch. Spinnerbait bite died off, switched to that new ghillie. We're gonna switch gears and see what happens. Listen to me, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor, comment, like, and share this. And also I wanna let you know that all this gear, including that brand new ghillie, it's gonna be a little contest going on with Berkeley and Abu Garcia. So enter the contest, look out for the next one, because I'm gonna stick with this ghillie. Let's see if we can catch a giant. Thanks a lot, bye.